everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks mainframe channel. This is Moshiks. And today we start a long overdue mini series of videos regarding the fabled IBM DF sort program. Why is sort so important, sorting so important to the mainframes? Well, because mainframes are really at the very core batch machines, batch processing machines, which means they were really designed uh, back then to uh, to divide a business procedure or any logical problem problem or program into into several discrete steps and then execute the steps whereas every step takes an input file or input data processes it and stores some output data and then this output data in turn becomes the input data for the next step and if you do it if you do process logic this way then you always have some data that you it, that that you can go back to if one step fails and you never really lose the data or are in risk or or, or losing data the other advantage is that you don't need to have a giant computer that does everything at once you can by dividing uh, logical problems into the steps and having intermediate data sets and that's why data sets are called data sets on the mainframe you can uh, you can make the problem smaller and a computer and if you think about the mainframe really got started in the in the late 40s and early 50s were then able to process uh, the huge amounts of data that already existed of course back then so think about having as the very input a uh, very early input data set the u.s census data then then needs to be split into all kind of um, demographic data such as by age or by population or by state so by uh, batch processing would be ideal because the input data set of course is huge but you want to have several output data sets and splitting this into several discrete steps will be able to make the problem smaller as you can see here on this photograph in front of you this is an IBM 407 mainframe I think from the um, about 1953 1954 if I'm not mistaken and the way these mainframes work of course everything was uh, punch cards there was no uh, disk uh, of course at all at this stage but you had a panel here and by wiring the panel a certain way you could say that what you wanted to perform on certain fields of the input punch cards and what was going to go on the output punch cards and by rewiring this panel you could control the logic and and if you look at this this is exactly what rpg does for all of the, those of you who know the rpg uh, report uh, generator uh, that's exactly what rpg does it takes an input card and then and then in in a way reflects still this with the panel wiring here and produces an output uh, card an output line and and so sorting has always been a very important component of any mainframe because sorting is a very important business function um, of course if you have later on we got index databases and if you have an index database sorting is kind of can be done in the query of the data itself but if you're processing batch data sorting and merging which means taking two uh, input data sets and merging them into some kind of logical fashion usually sorted by one field or the other into an output data set is of primary importance and so to this day sorting is a very very important function in any uh, in any business logic uh, less than scientific uh, but of course also it exists there but if you think about credit card processing I can't think uh, of a way to do credit card processing or invoicing for credit cards or insurance premiums without uh, sorting uh, data in one way or another and so, so sort is a very important and vital function on the mainframe and and so that's what we're going to look at today and then uh, maybe one or two other videos I'm going to make in the near future there is just before I get started on the mainframe there's two um, main sorting programs one is provided by IBM and sold of course for good money by IBM called DF sort and so we can look here DF sort IBM um, and so this one here and so that's a for payment uh, product by IBM another very famous one there's several but another one is called sync sort 
and which is a more user-friendly, maybe slightly more, uh, slightly faster um, uh, program for the mainframe that does much of the same thing. Uh, I think that usually most uh, larger shops do buy sync sort, but you also still find a lot of DF sort. And, uh, and so DF sort was supposed to be a simple way to sort data, but it's now becoming its own almost programming language. And there are several people within IBM and on the IBM main mailing list, uh, it is well known who those individuals are um, that, uh, that, that are the world experts on DF sort. But we're going to learn just enough in this video so you can get by and do some interesting stuff with sorting. Um, one last thing I want to say is that DF sort, as far as I know, is mostly uh, programmed and, and managed as a product from IBM's uh, San Jose uh, facility uh, in the Silicon Valley where I uh, used to live for a while. And, um, and then the last thing I want to say is that there is this manual, which is an excellent manual actually, uh, it's for ZOS 2.3, but they also have previous releases. Uh, DF sort, getting started. If you want to be serious about sorting on the mainframe, then uh, uh, you should get to know this. Of course, DF sort only exists on uh, newer um, mainframe operating systems. We do have a sort on TK4, which is the ancient. It's the precursor of the, of the pre or the predecessor of the predecessor of DF sort. Uh, and it's only able to work on 2314 DAST devices, which are ancient, ancient disks. But somebody, I think uh, Mr. Rayborn in the community, in the MVS 3.8 community, is rewriting sort. And so hopefully with uh, TK4 Update 9, we're going to get uh, a newer sort that is able to work on any disk geometry. So um, by moving this over here, um, yeah, let's move this over here to the left. And let's bring up a terminal, and I have DF sort running here um, on uh, on my own. Uh, as you know, I have uh, two IBM S390 cards, and so I'm able to run uh, an operating system here called uh, OS390, I think. And so that's what I'm running my own um, IBM S390 cards that fit into a computer. So. Uh, on this machine here, I have TF sort installed, and let's go see uh, the very basic introduction of what TF sort can do. And so we kind of extend from there, and, and and you know in the in the modern Unix world, we introduce the hello world concept that you start from the very basic program that just hello sort. It still isn't quite like that in IBM manuals. So we try to map the hello world concept uh, into, <laughs> into this manual. But it is an excellent manual and I recommend you get downloaded if you want to get familiar with, with sort and start playing with it. Okay, so I have here created a, a, a sequential file. So this is another partition data set of all the, although, um, DF sort can work with uh, with partition data sets, but uh, we're working here with with a sequential data set. As you can see here, I just took an example from uh, this manual here, this one here, and I created a basically a university uh, uh, course offering. And so living well on a small budget and then what department this is and the cost. Let's say this is all dollars. And so um, we put it in col columns here so we can see where it starts. It starts at position one and this starts at position 45, 46, 47, 48 and still this starts at position 60. And um, so that's all we need to know for now. So uh, we're gonna use this to make some, uh, to play with the data a little bit. Maybe we'll introduce a control card, which I call uh, um, Z Architecture uh, Advanced Topics. So I put in a Z because in the, sort, in the sorting, we would should ideally always see this if we sort ascending Z as the last. 
And so there will be computer science at the core, and the cost is again to have it uh, as a control card at $999. Okay, so this is going to be the data that we're going to play with for the first part of this uh, DF sort introduction. Again, we're going to use IBM DF sort, uh, as I just mentioned. And now let's go look a little bit at, oops, this is already news. Okay. So highlight JCL. So this is, I think, the very bare minimum um, JCL that you need to execute uh, a sort program. Now, before I, I go into the into this batch program, um, I just want to say that there is also a way to do this interactively. And, but I'll, uh, but it is cumbersome, so it's actually much faster to do it in in, in batch. But you can do it interactive if if you're so inclined. You just go here. If you have it installed, you will go. And this is, of course, a very old version of DF sort. It's, I think, at least 15, 18 years old. But uh, many of these concepts would apply one to one on uh, on uh, today's DF sort. You can see here, I have DF sort installed. So I will go here now. And as you can see, you can sort, copy, and merge. So you could do all this uh, also through the panels. And I know a lot of people prefer interactive these days. But DF sort is kind of a batch program, and so it fits into a batch environment. And I don't know, other than just maybe testing things and looking and, and trying things, I don't know why panels would make sense for sorting. Um, but you could do this also, as you can see here. You give it the input data set name, uh, and it, there's, a, there's a long list of panels to execute it. But I only did it once or twice. It works, but it's much more viable, I think, to do this the way we're doing it here. So let's look at what goes into JCL to sort anything. Of course, you need a job card, which in my case, uh, 40 megabytes on this very ancient um, operating system is more than enough. Then uh, D, there is two main tools um, to sort that are part of DF sort. One is Iceman. And uh, so Iceman has been <laughs> The name of the program ever since I think uh, late, late 70s and um, I do have somewhere a version of that that is still 24-bit and and then um, you need to provide it with the sort library which is usually sys1.sortlib you want to tell it where to write sys out and then usually you have a sort in and the sort out so sort in, in this case would be disposition share because we want to we want to share the data and we have the data that we just saw, basically this here on the left side. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. Is this better for you guys and gals? Okay, so um, this is the sort in, which is the input. And then I have here prepared a statement in case we want to allocate in each run. Uh, of course, uh, if we allocate each run, we have to make sure it doesn't exist yet, then we would have to first put in an ID cams job, a vSAM job to delete and reset the return code to zero in case it's not there. Uh, but this is just for us to have the JCL ready in case we want to allocate later. And then of course if you have sort in, you have sort out, which in my case is moshix.work.sort in, and sort out is moshix.work.sort out, and of course disposition share because it already exists, and if I wanted to allocate I would do new catalog and then delete. Uh, I think that's the best way to handle it in this case. And then you need, then sort needs a work area because when you sort stuff, you need to move it to, to the side and then and uh, and then do your sort job. And so you need a work area where to put stuff. Imagine you have a table and you want to sort from one dishes by size, maybe, I don't know, or something like that, or by color, you need to put them somewhere down um, so you can sort efficiently. And that's what the sort area does. Uh, I give it here five cylinders, which is more than enough for the little amount of data we have here. I think that's more than 25, 30 lines. And then we need to provide it with the with the sort commands. Now, sort knows 16 kind of statements. Uh, the simplest one I can think of is copy. So you can actually use sort 
or Iceman as we shall call it from now on. You can use Iceman to copy from one file to the next and be selective about what you copy. So if I all wanted to file, copy this file here, but exclude the price because I don't want to show the price, then I could just say copy um, this and then copy this stuff and uh, into a new file. So copy is one, sort of course is one where we sort data. There is uh, there are 16 kinds of statements um, and, uh, and uh, they're all explained in this manual. By the way, this manual also has a, JS, uh, has a FTP area, as you can see here, which has some even some uh, even more simple introduction. So I think read me what was it? Okay. What's new in sort? Uh, and they also have within the FTP area also some uh, input data sets that you can play with. Um, what is it? Yeah, here. So there's all kinds of interesting stuff here. So I recommend you to go to the FTP area. Uh, yeah, they also have some symbols, definitions. So as I said, Iceman has its own extensive programming language. But there's 16 uh, main verbs or in, uh, commands that you can give it. Um, so you can see here they are listed here. Sort, merge, option, include, omit, in record, out record, etc. We're going to be playing mostly with sort, sort in this first, um, in this first installment today. So um, as we saw here, let's look at the data again. So we have here, this is the input data. Of course, this is the num column, which we could re remove with unnum in the ISPF browser. But then um, let's assume that we want to sort this whole uh, file by this column. So if we sort ascending, then this should be obviously the last. If we sort descending, then should, this should be the first card. So why don't we try to do that and see what comes out. How do I do that? Well, I give it column one, which is this column. It always starts at column one. There's no zero in Iceman or sort uh, with a length of 20 bytes, but I think it's actually a little bit more. So let's give it 30. And we say this is character. Character means it's EBCDIC data. And uh, of course, you need to remember that this is not uh, ASCII, but this is EBCDIC. So this is all the format identifier. This is called the format identifier you can give it so it can, it can either be epsidic or binary or fixed point or zone decimal pack decimal or floating sign free form um, sign numeric which are the basic s370 s360 platform architecture uh, data values we've seen this extensively in my assembler programs i've written in the past such as uh, zone decimal uh, pack decimal etc so, but this is character data, obviously. So we tell it that this is going to be character data, and then we want to have it ascending. So because I put in a control card with the Z um, architecture course, I put in last. Uh, let's put it descending, and see. Let's see with a D, and let's see what comes out. So unless I have any errors, this should work. Submit job one two zero eight and condition code zero. So this looks good. Why don't we go and check this out? Yes, as you can see here, this now I have the sort in and let's look at it briefly. And of course here, the arc will be last because we just put this in, and now we have sort out. And of course, I told it to go descending. So this starts with Zark, the Z architecture, advanced topics, we've, and an advanced topics and psychoanalysis in the psychology department. 
all right so this worked so that's one easy way to sort now uh, this looks easy if you have 25 lines but if you are a credit card company and you have 20 million customers um, you can get to very large data sets and DF sort is blazingly fast and so is sync sort too by the way so let's try now uh, let's empty this data set okay save it so we emptied it and uh, just to play with it and let's make it as ascending well let's make it sort field 2 starting at uh, we saw it starts at 48 which is a department okay this starts at 48 and is up to 1 2 3 4 5 so 5 and it's character and we're going to sort ascending just to see what comes out let's run this as job number three Okay, we can't obviously have this open because uh, that would uh, create a locking problem, but uh, I'm not editing it. Job 1209, condition code 0. Hmm. Let's go check what came out. Okay, so it's sorted now by this column, as you can see here. And let's do a number. Um, um, well, I don't remember the command, but uh, as you can see here, this now is sorted by this um, column. Now you could say, is it only sorting this? Well, no, as you can see here, it's biology, an introduction to biology, so it sorts the whole card. And that's what I meant when I said that this is still kind of what this did, right? This took a card. And then you could wire here, plug in here, how you wanted it sorted. So you could you could say here which position and uh, how to sort ascending, descending, and then it would produce a new card with that input card as an image. Uh, of course, the F sort is now much smarter than that. I could tell it to only produce this and not produce the whole card. That, of course, is a possibility, but we're not doing it in this case. Um, so go back to the manual and let's go back to this one let's see what else we can do so one thing we didn't do is look at the output of the job itself the uh, just to output so why don't we do that Oops. okay so this is the normal output, uh, that's correct, March 2nd, it's 4.40 in the morning, yeah, I'm a little jet lagged. So this is uh, ICE, as you can see here, all the ICE messages are DF sort messages. And I think sync sort is SYN, but I could be mistaken. Um, it tells us all the work it did, as you can see here, these are the options there, default options, there is extensive, extensive options. You can override all those options. I think uh, modern uh, DF sort is even able to sort ASCII files. Uh, pretty sure, but uh, don't um, don't hold me to it. But I, I'm quite sure. So it tells everything that it did to process this, and actually not that much output. So this uh, is really focused on the data. Okay. So what else can we do now? Let's see if we can sort by price. So to sort by price, um, we know that the price in my data is stored at column 6. So we go here at 60, so we go here 60, the length of 5, and then we put in here, uh, we know that the record format, the record identifier for uh, data for numbers is by, for binary. So we put in here binary. and. Now let's run this and see, did I empty the field? Yeah. yeah, this is empty. By the way, I have to do, I do have to get out of the data set in edit mode because otherwise there's going to be a lock or an enqueue as it's called on 
in mainframe language uh, and, and the job cannot execute because it's being locked by the editor. Similar to, I guess, what would happen, well, I'm not sure what would happen in Windows because I don't understand Windows locking at all. Very, very, uh, uh, the, the concept kind of is not clear in Windows. But here it's clear. So anyway, so let's go and see what happens. Job 1213, and we'll, let's go look at it. All right, so it sorted the data um, by price, and we call it binary because it's unsigned, but it's not really binary in the sense of zeros and ones. It's uh, it's just numbers. If it's numbers, you call it binary. It's kind of like in PL1, binary bin, um, bin fixed, right? And so, uh, so you can see here this works as well. So now we were able to sort either by the name of the course being offered or by the department or by price. So uh, if, of course, if I put in here D, then it's gonna write it in descending order. So we can try this, 1214, and that went well. You could say, well, you just said that if it's locked, it can't run the job well yes but i'm browsing here i'm not editing because as you can see here it's all i don't know how you call this color blue or i wouldn't know how to call this color but um if it's if you're in edit mode then it's green so you can just get out and look at it again and so now the most expensive course is this one computer languages for five thousand four hundred and fifty three rupees um, so that is uh, the very basic first introduction. Um, and, uh, and that's as far as I want to see, to say here. Um, you can of course also put in various sorting, so you can do more than one sort. And uh, why don't we try to do that? Oops. Where were you? So we could say here um, format character if we want to specify the format, but uh, let's try to do a little bit more complex sort. So we will first sort by price, right? Then we'll sort by. Um, by the course name and let's leave it at that. So let's see, let's see what comes out if we sort this way. Well, uh, there's a problem. <laughs> let's go see what the problem is. We're beating the devil out of this DF sort. P, J, control statements. So it's not happy with our control statements. Uh, it has a problem here. And that it expects more. P, syntax error, J, end. It puts here the dollar where the problem is. It didn't want us to close here. So let's see what happens if we actually con continue. Oh, because we didn't put in the ascending. Again, 12.16, and this went well. Let's look at data. Just like so. Okay, so this is now sort of by price first, and then within the price, it's then uh, sorted by the uh, course being offered. Now, we don't have a good, well, we have a good way to test here because I actually changed the data here a little bit. I put in several cards with the same price, knowing that we would want to test that. So as you can see here, after it's sorted by this, then it's sorted by the course title. And of course, we could then go in and say, and then finally, 
sort by 48 for five uh, character descending. So, so now we also first we sort by the price, then we sort by the name of the course, and then if there's still some cards there, then we can sort within that by the department, but in descending order. So let's try to run that. 12, 17. Mm -hmm. Let's look again. Just like so. So, of course, we have to look within this section here, 234. So let's see if it first went um, to test that. Now we have to insert another line, let's say this one, but in two departments. Why don't we do that? Let's have some fun with the data. Uh, we can do anything we want, anything at all. So let's repeat this line. But here now we put it in the psychology. Because when you say, when you talk about crisis, why can it not be also? It can be in two departments, in psychology and in the history department. We can do anything we want. It's our data. So maybe time to update this. March 6, 5, and we we'll run this again. 12, 18, max condition code 0. And let's go look at the data. And so now, we, have, we said, let's look here what we said. First by price, then by the, the course name, and then by the department, but department was said descending. So psychology comes, P comes after, H, and so that's what it did. So it first by price, then by the course name. And these are exactly the same, but psychology is first because we have descending. So as you can see, uh, this works just beautifully, very very reliably. I've actually never seen Iceman a bend. I have run not in this last few years since I picked up mainframes again. But back uh, when I was working on mainframes in the 80s, I ran thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, Iceman jobs, and I never once saw it a bend. It's very reliable, uh, very resilient. You can throw at it all kind of uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of um, exceptions at it, and it will deal with it somehow. It's one of the best program, uh, programs ever written by IBM, in my humble opinion. So. Certainly glad that we can play with it here. So uh, later versions of SORT are also, of course, UTF-16 capable. I don't know if my old OS390 here is able to do it or not, but um, so this is what we can do. Now, we're going to look in the next videos at uh, merging because that's always very interesting when you have two input data sets and they need to be merged and then create a new output data set. So we're going to play with that in the next video. But I think for now today we saw how to write a very simple JCL that can, that can sort fields, uh, how to run it, how to play with it. Uh, we saw that there are panels for it, but uh, you want to do it in JCL as I advise you to do. And, um, and now we're going to put this uh, JCL here in the description below this video so you can uh, you can play with it and if you have any questions I would uh, urge you to uh, just put comments below this video just below uh, the, uh, the video you're watching right now if you have any other advice or any other uh, uh, encouragement for the viewers who want to play with it for anybody else you're of course always welcome to post comments I also I'm also always encouraged whenever I get the thumbs up uh, for a thumbs up for my videos so uh, uh, thank you for all those and if you haven't subscribed yet then now is a very very good time to do so thank you for watching it was fun doing this today and see you soon goodbye